Misdirection, misdirection, misdirection. Clearly a red herring. Miss, wait, what? Ladies and gents, internet, my name is Pridium, and hindsight is 2020, or in the case of the year of this video, 2021. And of course, we all saw these winners coming. It's not like Chicken George wasn't the obvious front runner robbed at the last second or anything. Regardless, when it comes to predicting the winner, it is safe to say the internet has seen every winner coming somehow. You never really hear much from the people who get it wrong. Wait, why is everyone editing their winner predictions? Is that white out on your monitor? Jimmy, I have the receipts. You know what? But that's exactly the essence I will be capturing in this video. Here are the top five most obvious Big Brother winners. Number five. And of course we start with the winner I initially didn't see coming. Round of applause. At the beginning of Big Brother 21, I did not expect Jackson Mickey, my number five, to be the winner because he was way too big of a target to go the distance. Historically, these types of players don't make it all that far. The comp beast, physically the biggest guys in every room. They're walking targets, or in the case of Jackson, they are double fisting watermelons in the shower. But the curious case with Jackson was that with every week that he survived, his win equity shot way up. BB21 was the most physically demanding season we had ever seen up to that point, and around the jury phase, it became apparent that Jackson was the front runner, especially when he made a secret Final Four pact with Holly, Cliff, and Nicole, the four players who eventually all became the Final Four, go figure. Jackson aligned himself with all the right people at mostly all the right times, and if he wasn't winning a competition guaranteeing his safety, someone in his alliance was. With every passing week, it was Jackson's game to lose, which of course he didn't, and even by the time the Final Five reared its waffling head, I don't know if Cliff and Nicole keeping Tommy would have stopped Jackson from still being the winner. Based on how the comps broke down, I don't think Jackson's competition was gonna stop him. Congratulations, Mickey. You have one big brother. Come on out. Number four. Going into the final week of this season, I asked my audience who they thought would win, and 63% of them said number four. And I agree with them, even though I think history has made it less apparent, because the fourth most obvious winner is Casey Clark from Big Brother 20. Yeah, by the time BB20 was wrapping up, nearly two thirds of you guys <laughs> listening right now, at least a couple of years ago, were expecting Casey to win, and so was I. Both Casey and Tyler were a two-headed comp beast, controlling almost every week with the veto wins or the HOH wins or the hacker twist. Casey was agreeable, under the radar, in a power position from week one, made an ally out of the smartest tactician in the house, and didn't really get anyone mad at her all season. It's a perfect recipe for success. Which again, kind of explains that 63% that I talked about. Mind you, I wasn't entirely confident Tyler couldn't pull this out, but I was fairly certain both of them would be in the final two, and at that point, the odds are good either way. Level six was in such control, and the two of them, coast to coast, were always in the best position within it, both having a final two ride or die between them, and both winning just about all of the end game competitions. Congratulations, Casey. You are the winner of Big Brother 20. Number three. It's fitting that this winner is number three on this list, given the only time I was worried they wouldn't be the winner was at the final three. My third most obvious Big Brother winner is Hayden Moss from Big Brother 12. All season, the brigade laid waste to their competitors, even so much as lobotomizing the brains of their operation before the promised final four. Hayden had a lot of control, starting with being the week one HOH, assisting in the formation of the dominant power lines of the season, getting into a showmance with Kristen, and having both her and Brendan as a parachute duo alliance in the event that Hayden might get nominated. He would always be up next to either of those two. Hayden was so well positioned, not just within the house, but within the locus of power, and for me, he was the top dog too, having the social game on lock compared to either of his true competition in Enzo and Lane. It was only at the final three that I had any doubt that he might win, given it's possible either Enzo or Lane could easily evict him for whatever reason, had they won a crapshoot HOH. But the moment that he reached the final two, between his calm composure to Lane's joke of a final Q&A performance in front of the jury, it seemed all too obvious he had it in the bag, and honestly, he deserved more than four votes. Congratulations, Hayden. Number two. 
Speaking of terrible Q&A performances in front of the jury, give it up for Gina Marie, everyone. There's just no one else she can be. And in that same vein, there was literally no one else at that point who was the winner other than my number two, Andy Heron on Big Brother 15. If you rewatch BB15, it is very apparent Andy is playing the best game out of a mess of a house. It was certainly difficult to predict Andy as the winner early on, if only because he was barely on the show at all, but the moment that he popped up and really took center stage around the time the jury was forming, Man, was it a blowout on every front. The editors cheekily included a segment where everyone in the house talked about how good they felt with Andy, and it's one of my favorite moments in the series. One of the best social games we have ever seen, Andy consistently pivoted at the right time and was never in anyone's line of sight, not even after he pulled the wool over his opposition in the double eviction, or when he formed the exterminators after already being in the 3AM alliance on top of basically having everyone in the house in his pocket. Amanda was scorching the earth, Alyssa stood no chance, Judd had already been evicted, McRae had no win equity, Spencer was the eternal pawn, and Gina Marie was literally Gina Marie. And then there was Andy. Congratulations, Andy. You are the winner of Big Brother. Gina Marie, Andy, come on out. Now, before I get to number one, I want to talk about an honorable mention. A player who, as I say this right now, I wasn't sure where to put them. At times, I had them as high as number two, other times not in the top five, maybe number six. And that is Cody Calafiori from Big Brother 22 All-Stars 2. While I do have him really high on my list, potentially at number two, depending on how I look at the season, I do think throughout the game, his win wasn't nearly so obvious. Cody faced numerous threats, such as Tyler, Mem Memphis, Nicole, a previous winner, or even Christmas, who had a short-lived underdog narrative building. While yes, many players throughout the season were working to increase his odds of winning, not all of these players he was aligned with were incapable of winning themselves. And I think that might be a key differentiator and why I'm tripping up with him. It wasn't an alliance of goats, even though Cody likely beats all of them. It was only at the final three that I felt like it was a done deal. He was the winner. But yet, around prior, had Christmas won the final four veto, Cody was out. And that's what makes Cody's game and win and spot on this list so peculiar. Just about every week, he was a single competition away from being in the hot seat and potentially getting evicted. Luck broke his way every time, and he never faced that adversity, and good for him. And there's a good argument to be made that he might never get evicted even if he did get nominated by Janelle, or Kaser, or Day, or Bay, or Kevin, or David, or whomever had him in their sights. But it's tough to ignore that he was in a lot of people's sights and for a long while, I never felt like the game was Cody's to lose. It was around the halfway point when Tyler bowed out that it became more apparent he was the front runner. but even then, his stiff competition made it all seem like he was on a razor's edge. And yet I look back at BB22 and I'm like, who am I kidding? Obviously, Cody was winning. Congratulations, Cody. You are the winner of Big Brother All-Stars. Come on out, gentlemen. Number one. One of the only times in my Big Brother history, maybe the only time if I think about it, that I was able to spot a winner in the preseason. This is my survivor Kim Spradlin of winner picks, the coldest of takes, not even on day zero did I feel bad about picking them, and then when the live feeds turned on, I somehow felt even more comfortable. The most obvious Big Brother winner, in my opinion, is Derek Lavasser from Big Brother 16. I think it's fitting for this video how obvious my number one pick would be. Derek began in a great spot, a part of the massive majority alliance in the bomb squad. He had shields for his shields, layers and layers of insulation, with a ride or die in Cody, some very strong allies with the detonators, and multiple alliances across the board. The only rationale I could believe all season was that Derek was the winner. And then from there, whoever could even notice how high his win equity was would be the next to go. Never mind him dodging a bajillion nominations with the Battle of the Block or getting taken to the final two after losing the final HOH, Derek's win was never in doubt, and it was a masterclass in how to play the game, especially given it was his first time walking through those front doors. Congratulations, Derek. You are the winner of Big Brother.
And those are my top five most obvious Big Brother winners. So uh, what do you guys think? Was this video too obvious? Is there something to be gleaned about how obvious these players were as the winners? Who would you have as your top five? Thank you to my patrons for obviously being at the top of my heart. And of course, to everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to bet on red on your way out. And I will see you in the next one once I get out my pen and paper and start taking notes. Hey, never know. Might learn a thing or two. All right, take notes, America. This is how I'm about to steal Caleb from Frankie. One, I'm gonna build up Caleb's ego a little bit more. Two, let him know that I'm a terrible player. Unfortunately, I've played a horrible competition game and I've really just been kind of floating along. Three, although he's a beast, there are a couple other people, beside myself, of course, that could potentially beat him. Yeah, you've played a better game than me up to this point. Right. You've won the comps that needed to be won. Right. You're a guy that people view as can win this whole thing. Like I'm not viewed as a threat because I'm not a, viewed as one of the big competitors in the house. Right. I think any one of you would beat me. I hate knocking myself on national TV, but it is what it is. I'm a realist. I don't think you would beat me if we were in the top two. Uh, him and Frankie. Me and Frankie. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be I think I'd beat him. It's close. You, Frankie, you, Cody, that's a title fight. Yeah. But you don't see many title fights in here because people aren't stupid. I'm telling you now, if you're in there and I win the final HOH and you're one of the three, I am taking you. And that, people, is how you win $500,000. I'll see you at the finale.